Dreek nursed his bitter ale, studying the young, olive-skinned alien across the dingy space station cantina table. Another would be Hunter wanting tips on joining the Light Crusher's Guild. Always more glory-hungry fools looking to make a name with an impressive notch on their belts. Dreek kept his bone blades tucked away. No need to scare off an idiot quite yet. So, Flupont, they send you seeking the man-killers, eh? Eager to learn the hunt? Dreek asked, grinning, his own reptilian skin camouflaging against the grimy walls. The rookie shifted nervously in his hazard suit, eyes bright. I have some contracts lined up on Gelrexum IV. Corporate types, fairly high level, good bounties. His words trailed off, seeing the scarred veteran shake his head. Forget those soft targets. I speak of real prey, the kind that tests your skills to the fullest. Dreek hissed low with a knowing wink. I take it you have heard only stories of the Terran worlds? Ever wonder why we Light Crushers decline all human marks? The youth blinked all four eyes curiously. Well, I heard they can be savage fighters. But credits are credits in this trade, right? He chuckled at Dreek's sudden barking laughter. Dreek leaned forward, four dark eyes gleaming ominously. Picture a lush, thriving world called Earth, filled with an aggressive young two-legged race evolving as the planet's apex predator. He toyed with the jagged throwing spike absently. For nearly 200,000 cycles, before interstellar travel itself existed, Humanity strove relentlessly to dominate rivals and tame their hostile environment through warfare and science. Flupont's brow furrowed, listening to the lecturing assassin recount legends of bone fields and blood-soaked human histories from fractured tribal skirmishes to industrialized global wars. These mammals had clawed civilization from wilderness through sheer collective fury, it seemed. Yet that was merely prelude for alien contact. By their 19th century, the humans unlocked rudimentary spaceflight. Then before they could advance too far into the stars, the Prozenuthian Empire arrived seeking conquests. Dreek barked another harsh laugh, seeing his partner's face blanch, realizing implications. Few species repelled those feared star legions. Oh yes, the humans were enrolled into harsh occupation for a time, but they learned quickly, stole technology, and bred warrior resistance quietly across 80 solar cycles before unleashing hell itself upon their tormentors. Dreek spied Flupont trembling now. So far, so good. The fool just might survive first contact by running very fast. Now to spur necessity's instincts. The Light Crusher Cantina Den hummed with seedy patrons of a dozen odd species, yet young Flupont only stared wide-eyed, unable to blink. Dreek had elaborated the ghastly war atrocities committed on both sides during the prolonged Terran liberation conflict until even the battle-hardened assassin's own scales paled slightly. Rumors persisted that a few besieged pro zenuthian garrisons chose honorable suicide over risking human capture and interrogation or experimentation once their empire pulled back across the stars. Even after consolidating independence a less than a century ago, human space remained cautiously marked as a biohazard quarantine zone among galactic charts still today. So they did throw off occupying tyranny through bloodshed and hellfire, I admire the spirit like any proud people wronged. Flupont managed finally, taking a hasty swig of numbing ale. But surely we guildmates can handle a few angry hairless warriors today, yes? The contract credits appeal nicely. Dreek's spine crests flared abruptly. Have you learned nothing from the old archives, fool? Their history as pack predators drives humanity inherently towards technological war monstrosities. A heavy clawed fist pounded the battered table edge, causing nearby patrons to glance over nervously. No single human should be underestimated, but unified groups attackers face genocidal hazards. He gestured sharply to the crude wanted ads, crawling along dingy bar telescreens advertising bounties. 
Note those lacking images or identifiers. Vaporized kin of other hunters who somehow provoked remote frontier colonies. Those mammals rarely bother taking prisoners. All their planets bristle with city buster warheads and orbiters packing planet cracker class beams as routine defenses in case of invasion. Dreek growled low. And for all their interplanetary bureaucracy, the humans remain fiercely tribal at heart. Each planet's massive standing militia outmasses our entire guild. Dreek swilled his drink, chemical burn distracting from haunting mission memories. Old comrades lie butchered across desolate bases, humanity discovered. Their wrathful reclamation regime sterilizes worlds suspected of holding captive hominid populations by other races. Dreek spied genuine fear crossing his apprentice's eyes as historic human vengeance patterns spilled forth. Flupon leaned away from partitionally decoded data images of bizarre specimens recovered from penal colony ruins. He seemed to finally grasp the manic obsession driving humanity to utterly extinguish threats against their kind. Rumors hinted at darker breeding experiments concealed on nameless orbital bases moreover. Yes, their crusades and inquisitions push beyond mere justice into genocidal madness, facing one risks antagonizing all. Dreek sighed heavily. Thus, the guild declines their bounties despite absurd credit payouts, because credits spend poorly to corpses or from imprisonment labs. He watched Flupont gulping the harsh liquor nervously. Now the fool grasped true apex predator fury. What? What about common off-world sites, then? Flupont managed finally. Surely not even these savage bipeds travel armed expecting a fight within leisure stations and commercial hubs frequented by tourists? Dreek merely snorted caustic laughter. You assume civilians and soldiers remain separate castes among that fraying species? A clawed finger tapped the statistic profiles displayed upon the table's hollow projector, showing nearly 30% of human population having compulsory militia training during youth. They learn efficiency of violence early on, and more volunteer eagerly for off-world garrison duty. Flupont paled further, imagining commercial docks and silk-robed diplomats suddenly brutalizing threats with backup power armor and scavenged demolition tools given slightest provocation. Dreek spied memories flickering behind the apprentice's terrified gaze, likely prior rowdy encounters around trade zones. Any one of those loud past adversaries may have carved up the foolish lad. Never assume with mankind. So if by some fool stroke of luck you avoid execution after downing a target on sanctuary worlds, the hunted kin will rally in a blood frenzy. Dreek smiled coldly. Posses of veterans even chase after families fleeing vengeance across parsecs. Indeed, no lair remained distant enough once humanity decreed your breed annihilated. Rest came only through anonymous obscurity. Perhaps now this young hatchling understood the earthborn scourge. Flupont sat numbly watching archive footage of ravaged bases and shattered hunter ships strewn across death worlds that had hidden human fugitives. The menu kept flashing with gruesome scenes from frontier regions to backwater for routine patrols. Entire planets glassed over by orbital platforms. Their coordinates stood strictly barred from guild members after failed capture efforts ended so spectacularly. Only belated public gene pattern analysis showed captured research specimens tweaked into suffering weapons aimed back at their tormentors. Clan inking and DNA signatures designated victims for Manchurian off-switch termination should they somehow be rescued or escape later on. A devastatingly insidious innovation Dreek secretly admired, even as the documented cruelty turned his twin stomachs. Never take prisoners yet ensure no freedom if so. You glimpse their savage craft, yes? Dreek asked quietly. Ancient tribal brains honed for extermination warfare, combined with modern technological capacities for immense cruelty. He flicked the footage away in disgust. 
other undocumented nightmares surely terraform hidden outposts, so do not voyage blindly across the void, hatchling. Dreek glimpsed a dawning realization hollow Flupont's gaze about humanity's capabilities when cornered and threatened. Mankind comprised the galaxy's youngest sentience, yet clung fiercely to still primal ruthless instincts. The roots lingered carved by ice and lions. By the twin suns, never take them lightly on their own urban terrain or frontier stars. The apprentice assassins stared silently into swirling dregs, reflecting on all shared today about the savage earthborn scourge, overwhelming worlds, and humiliating mighty empires long past. This climate changed calculations. Dreek glimpsed understanding dawning in his apprentice's haunted eyes and nodded. Flupont peered closer at the grainy freeze frame images of dissected non-human specimens floating in transparent nutrient gel tanks aboard an orbiting laboratory station. Certain guild rumors suggested the humans delved into perfecting contaminant strains tailored to extinction-level lethality against alien genetic makeups. All to answer blood for blood if one of their colonies suffered attack. Now you realize the tactics we face, yes? Dreek rumbled. Man forsake man over slights, yet if outsiders dare hunt them, all factions unite in vengeful stampede. He flicked the gruesome file footage closed. Never attempt to kill or capture a human. They are not to be chased. They are the ones who chase. Dreek said as he left the young Flupont to think hard before selecting what was assured suicide for mere credits.